The foul on Blitz Wooten. Nice inside play. Too bad they gave him a foul. There, nice ball pick by Andy Elkins. Watch Andy Elkins. Good little fake. Just got Wooten to leave his feet enough to have him hold as Elkins went to the bucket. Well, if they called that on the block, then it was one of those home court advantage fouls, I think. <laughs> Elkins hit the first free throw for Evansville as they that never put Case Beer and Heisel up uh, on the stripes for a change. First free throws of the game. Jim Cruz not putting his team in the paint, and now Case Beer will be the only player around as Elkins gets ready for his Second free throw. Scott Treffler is back in the game for Evansville. And Elkins nails it. 24 to 9. Five minutes and 32 seconds left in the first half. LaSalle's got to find some offense here. Got to get some momentum going before halftime. LaSalle led this game at 8-6 and has scored only three points since then. Another miss, and here come the aces. Case Beer into the middle and he draws a foul. Newbauer's going to get called for it. LaSalle's just not taking very many good shots right now. Two fouls on Jeff Neubauer. You see Case Beer get the long rebound and go right to the bucket. That's what he's famous for. He doesn't have, when you look at him, uh, what appears to be a basketball body, <laughs> but he's so strong. Upper body strength is critical. Elkins into Case Beer, and there is exactly what we're talking about. He takes it up between two of the explorers for his second bucket of the game. Four points for Parrish, Case Beer, and LaSalle wants a timeout. Speedy Morris is finding out what the MCC is all about early. 26-9, Evansville leads it. Back with more in a moment. I'm feeling empty. I'm feeling blue. Evansville's dominating inside. You see the ball fake by Andy Elkins. He had three LaSalle explorers up in the air. And you see why Case Beer is such a great player. He's a little weasel in, among the trees there, but his quickness, his sneakiness, he got open on the inbounds play. Evansville with an incredible run right now on a 20-1 run in the last 10 minutes of this game. They were leading at that point 8-6, but Evansville is shooting 60% from the field while LaSalle has gone stone cold. 3 of 21 and a half, only 14% with just under five minutes remaining. Yeah, this is Kirkland Mott who draws a foul on Hoopman, and that's exactly what Evansville didn't want in the last few minutes. Sure. Uh, the, the, the other thing, the point you got to make is that Evansville's out-rebounding LaSalle 17-7 to inside. This is the second foul on Hoopman, and uh, both fouls he's picked up are just because he didn't move his feet. Well, I always like to say Hoopman was trying to cover him out in three-point range, and I like to say that the, the air gets a little thin for the big guys out top there. It's <laughs> tough to guard. Crowd wants another travel call on Mott. They won't get it. Wooten on the outside. One of eight from the field right now. Towns forces another one and misses, but they're going to get Kokenauer for a foul. That's going to be the first on top. Guy that plays as physical as he does picks up his first foul. Yeah. He made it count, too. Todd Kokenauer so far, great first half. You haven't heard much from Kareem Towns, been very, very quiet. And that's about half of the reason that the uh, LaSalle Explorers are down 26 to nine. Kareem averages over 18 a game and nine rebounds. He actually has the season high in rebounds for LaSalle so far this season. He had 12 in a game earlier. And the stroke looked a little bit better on that first free throw as he puts his second point of the game in. You know, Mark, he gets a lot of his points from three-point land. He shoots more than 11 three points a game. And Towns has his third point. And Board finally clicks into double figures for LaSalle. 26-11, Evansville. Uh, double dribble, Reed Jackson. Almost a phantom, but I think he touched it enough that the call went the other way for LaSalle. That's another, that's a forward trying to lead the offense out front. I'm sure Jim Cruz would rather have Kokenauer or Schreffler hand the ball up, handle the ball up top there. LaSalle wants to get something going before they go into the half. These are going to be a very important ten minutes, the last five here in the first half, and the first five of the second half. If they lose the basketball, Jackson turns the wrong way and doesn't see it, and Paul Burke comes the other way for LaSalle. Wooten with the step, and he's got a bucket. Blitz Wooten with his fourth point of the game. Sophomore out of Trenton, New Jersey. LaSalle, a team that Speedy Morris recruits around home. Philadelphia, New Jersey. Here's Wooten with a nice step. 
Went to the basket hard. That's where you have to finish that kind of play up. Evansville leads it by 13. Four minutes left in the first, and Shackler hits the nice jumper. He's two of two from the field. His first was a three, and he's got five points. Evansville ran a set play that time. Got Shreffler open right at the foul line. Newbauer back on the attack for the Explorers. You can see Evansville more than willing to let Bruton shoot. Right, I was just going to mention Andy Elkins is way off, and that allows him to help out inside. Towns with a miss. He gets his own rebound and tries to take it back up, and I think we're setting an MCC record for jump ball. <laughs> That's a third of this half, and LaSalle will have the possession. You mentioned Andy Elkins. Look at him help out. Great job of rotation. He knows that Wooten's not a threat from out by the foul line, so he helps back cause a tie-up. we are going to have a charge. Kirkwin Mott took the ball inside, and uh, guess who was there? Schreffler of the eighth. 28-13, Evansville leads it. Let's take a look. Look at Evans, what a great job of defense. Case Beer takes the charge. One of the things that Jim Cruz prides himself on, and this defensive squad prides himself on, is playing defense. Take a look at that score, 28-13. That's the kind of things they put in the scrapbook. Took Parrish Case Beer 10 minutes to get into the game, but he hasn't come out since as he puts his fifth point on the board for Evansville. And he's doing the things that he's done in the past couple of years to make him the MCC Player of the Year. Well, Coach Cruz knows that for Evansville to have a good season this year, Case Beer's got to be into it mentally. He's got all the physical tools, but he's got to play every game emotionally and mentally, and it, you won't see him sitting out a, a heck of a lot more. Aces lead by 17 as they continue to hit their free throws. Newbauer up top to Burke. Left side, here comes Kareem Towns with another shot, and he's got it. Nice move by Kareem. There we saw a little bit of the athletic ability that we've heard about. That's the sky jumper from Kareem. Reed Jackson almost loses the basketball out of bounds, but it's Schreffler back on the right side as the Aces reverse it around. Elkins, Jackson, and Schreffler again with a jumper. He's two for three from the field now. Case Beer hangs in there, gets the steal, and picks up a foul, and LaSalle's less than happy. One of the assistants lost his gun. <laughs> well, what they were unhappy about is Parrish Case Pier used that tremendous upper upper body strength. Watch him hook Wooten. Wooten goes down. Case Pier picks the ball up. And Newbarrow will pick up his third foul right there as Case Pier takes it to the hoop. He'll be shooting two more. That's the old Nat sound of the Explorer bench uh, entertaining at home. And I'll tell you what, this town is crazy about Evansville basketball. Uh, you just saw a little cutie, a little uh, that small Evansville Purple Ace fan. That's the eighth point of the night for Case Beer. Free throws, Evansville's yet to miss. Ten of ten from the line. You can see why they lead the league in percentage. So far for LaSalle, three of four. Jim Cruz's team always seems to win when they shoot more free throws than the opposition. But there will be a couple of free throws coming up here for LaSalle. As Andy Elkins will pick up the foul. Nice pass inside. You see again the great rotation by Evansville. On that occasion they're called for the foul. And I think that uh, that's what they need to do a little bit more of is take it strong to the hoop. They. Uh, they obviously are over undersized against this very tall Evansville team, but right now, with Hoopman out of the game, taking it inside is going to be an advantage for them. We talked on the pregame about how many outside three-point shots they like to throw up there. That's not going to win them this basketball game. they got to get the ball inside, perhaps get some of Evansville big people in foul trouble. And I think that's what you're going to see as they come out in the second half. Turquin Mott. Hits his second free throw, the 6'8 freshman out of Philadelphia. And it's 32-17, a 15-point Evansville lead. The Explorers 5 of 6 from the line now. Evansville going to take the air out of it here a little bit in the last couple of minutes? Well, the South came out with a little half-court pressure. Trying to make something happen before the half. Nice dish. Scott Schreffler with an outstanding dish as he drew the defense to him. And guess who's shooting more free throws? Parrish Casebeer. Yep. Watch this play. We just found out why Streffler's the number one assist leader in the MCC. 
Nice dish to Case Beer. He knew exactly where his buddy was underneath the basket. Evansville is just doing an outstanding job of shooting the basketball at the free throw line right now. They have yet to miss on the night. Case Beer just made it 11 of 11 for the Purple Aces. We mentioned Case Beer. Case Beer is the first player in MCC history last year as the MCC Player of the Year to lead the league in both scoring and rebounding. He's two of two so far from the field for four points from the field. And now with the miss there, he has five of six on the line. The old TV jinx, right? Yeah, sure. We can't talk about this stuff all the time, Gary. Get some new subject matter. Sal back on the O, 16 down, and Towns makes it 13 very quickly. And you can just see that Kareem Towns is going to be a superstar. Very smooth. Very smooth. As he gets more comfortable, his game comes back in loads. Well, I don't care who you are. When you score 40 points a game in high school, I don't care what league it is, that's, that's some offensive ability. Elkins with a nice inside move, and I think Andy Elkins has got to be the big surprise so far for Evansville as he puts in his 10th point. Big scoring early for him in the season, and then he's fallen off a little bit. But back, back in action tonight, huh? Blitz Wooten up top, almost throws it away, and then Colombo does. Here comes Elkins again. And some defense, too, Mark. Kokenauer takes it inside and decides Schreppler's got the three, and he throws it long off the right. Case Beer with another offensive rebound. This time he doesn't get the foul inside. And they're coming back the other way. Burke pulls up. Goes the other way to Colombo. Back to Paul Burke. He'll try the three. No. Rebound Elkins. A minute remains in the first half of play. Jim Cruz says, why don't we make this a two-possession first half here in the last minute? He'd like his aces to take it down. Well, Work some time. Man to man now, Mark. They are in a man-to-man -man for the first time this half. Trying to force an error here and possibly have two possessions. Evans are working on a high, double high post, trying to get Case Beer the ball. Schreffler takes an early shot and nails it. Scott Schreffler with his seventh point of the game. The senior out of Stone Fort, Illinois. Great execution. They set two picks. Case Beer is up and so is Schreffler. LaSalle's going to have a hard time playing man-to-man -man against the Aces. Petey Morris calls the play for Paul Burke. 15 seconds left as they set the offense for the final shot of the first half. Evansville's done just about everything they wanted to coming into this game. Burke with a three that misses. It's a fun place to play. I've never seen so many purple sport coats in my life. I didn't know they made purple sport coats. Elkins back inside now as we get underway with the second half as Evansville goes with their original starting lineup of Elkins, Reed Jackson, Sasha Hoopman, who got two personal fouls in the first half and has just been called for a three-second violation. Todd Kokenauer and Scott Treffler at the guards for LaSalle. They'll go with their starting five as well. Turkwin Mott, T.K. Colombo, Blitz Wooten, Kareem Towns, and Paul Burke, number 23, with the basketball right now as they reset the offense down 17 points here as we open the second half. Inside, Mott with a nice jumper over Elkins. And, Mark, you mentioned how does LaSalle get back in this basketball game. That was a good indication. they got to execute and get a lot better shots and do a better job rebounding. Right now they're getting out rebound at 19 to 10. Schreffler comes off the pick and takes the bounce pass from Kokenauer, and Schreffler bottoms out another jumper. He's got it going tonight. Got to play a little defense, too. Wide open, little 10-foot jumper. You can't give Scott Schreffler that shot. That's his ninth point. He's missed only one shot on the night. LaSalle back on the other side. Evansville, such a different team with Hoopman in the game defensively. The long three by Towns is no good, and Elkins gets the board. They really are different because if he doesn't block a shot, he, he makes somebody take a different shot. He changes shots a lot inside the paint. Treffler again on the left side. Pulls the ball back out. This is Todd Kokanow. Hasn't been playing like he's been injured. Uh, he's a gutsy guy. He's got that bad thumb, but he's sticking it out. Reed Jackson, nice inside bounce pass to Hoopman, who gets the awkward turnaround jumper, but drops it nonetheless. Wasn't pretty, but it went in. He can do a lot of things ugly when you're 7-1. It's only his fourth point of the game. As the crowd chants, 
41, 22 Evansville, a 19 point leader and the ball's kicked out of bounds. They'll reset a fresh 45 second on the shot clock. The other thing Hoopman adds to the Purple Ace is their coaching staff was saying what a leader he is inside. He really communicates well, tells people where to be and that's odd because he's from West Germany. <laughs> He spent a couple of years in high school in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and that's where he really picked up the game of basketball. This is Blitz Wooten trying to go over the top of Hoopman, and he pulls off the board. So weird to see a seven-footer wearing that guard number 10. <laughs> looks, looks a lot taller, doesn't it? Oh, it. <laughs> LaSalle wants the five-second call. They don't get it. Hoopman misses on the jump hook, and we're going to have a foul on Reed Jackson of Evansville. That's the second for number 45. You saw more out of North City, Illinois. You saw Hoopman miss that little half hook. Part of the reason he's a little winded as he walks back down the court. Normally he makes that shot. We mentioned before, he really doesn't have his game win back. You can see the air cast on his left ankle as Wooten tries another jumper and misses. Loose ball picked up by LaSalle as Colombo outside the arc tries the tray and he trades it. That was a nice looking shot, and again, good execution by the Explorers. First points of the game for Lutique Colombo. Very important that he gets back going into the offense. Burke tries to pick up the ball, does it? Schreffler, Kokenauer posts up for the three. Long rebound, Hoopman. He goes back up and has it. Well, he's a rebound, another bucket for Hoopman. He's got six. He's tough inside. He's really worked over the summer, got a lot stronger. Blitz Wooten still tries the J and doesn't get it, but Turquin Mott with an outstanding position and put back bucket. It's one of the things LaSalle does very well. They go to the offensive board really better than they do to the defensive board. That's how they score a lot of their points. Schreffler puts up another shot. Evansville much quicker on the trigger in the second half. I don't think Jim Cruz likes that. Now you're going to see a timeout if that continues. 43-27. 16-21 remaining in the second half of play. Turquin Mott with another shot. He's on the line. It only goes for two as he gets the shooter's roll. And it's 43-29. LaSalle trails by 14. They're doing exactly what they needed to do coming out of the locker room. Much better shot selection. Andy Elkins with another quick shot by, by Evansville. And Jim Cruz had that, hey, what are you doing shooting? Oh, good shot. That's exactly right. We saw it. Elkins now you, with 14. He's our MVP so far, Andy Elkins. Great ball game. Wooten is bound and determined to make that 14 to 16 footer, and he's yet to put it on the board. Uh, I got to let him shoot all day. I think that you're going to see the Aces make a few more passes in this possession. <laughs> Treffler top of the key, left side. Reed Jackson tries to hit Hoopman. Nice defense by Turkman. Turkman Mott, and then. Hoopman picks up the cheap foul, and he's less than happy because that's his third. And that's a timeout as Parrish Casebeer comes back in. Hoopman will take a rest with three fouls. His Evansville team leads it 45 to 29. 265 pounds going up strong. Pretty tough for the LaSalle Explorers. That's why he's averaging almost 10 rebounds a game and doing some damage tonight. Harris Casebeer came into the game, and, and, and Jim Cruz says the heck with the tie. I've had about enough, and we'll let you know when the jacket goes for Jimmy. <laughs> Speedy Moore is still is fully attired down on the LaSalle bench, and, and he's the legendary one for shedding the jacket. So we'll give you an update on the attire watch here. We still have time long. for that jacket to fly. You bet. I think if Wooten misses a few more of those jumpers, <laughs> that may go. Nice baseline move by Paul Burke with a pull-up jumper. No, Kareem Towns with a tip. No, and his second tip goes. He was the only one on the board. LaSalle's doing a much better job on the offensive rebounding category. They've cut the lead to 14 as they're into man-to-man -man here in the second half now. They finally switched up the defenses a little bit. Shaka Chandler in for Evansville. This is Todd Kokenauer. Scott Schreffler. Evansville normally does a nice job of execution against man-to-man -man defense. They practice against it all week long. Burke picks up the loose ball. This is Towns with the three. He doesn't waste a lot of time putting it up. The man is not shy. But he's not as hot from the outside as he has been of late. 
And Kareem's loose ball goes out of bounds, and Evansville takes over, leading 45-31, 14-34 left. Gillette and the revolutionary Gillette Sitzer shaving system. Gillette the best a man can get. Chandler up top. Chaka had five in the first half. Picked out by LaSalle. Here comes Quinn Mott. The double fake, and he loses it out of bounds. You saw Hoopman, Evansville got the ball inside to Hoopman. He was unable to go finish the playoff because he's going off his left ankle. They called the foul on Chandler there. Hoopman was in the action but didn't get the foul. Shaka Chandler picks up his foul. Hoopman got back down to 10-10, but Wooten's going to the line. First foul on Shaka. Turquin Mott, 6'8 freshman out of Philadelphia. Shoots the first of two, and he's got it. Perfect form. This is a guy that grew a couple inches over the summer. You always love that as a coach when a guy comes in and says, by the way, I'm a little bit taller than the last time you saw me. He went away as a forward, came back as a center. Actually, Speedy Morris is able to use him a little bit at the center position because of the added height. Find out what he was eating. Turkle nails the second. He's got an even 10 on the game. 45-33. This is as tight as it's been for a while, and Towns makes the steal in the open court. Oh, nice shot. He lost the ball as he went up. He was going to lay it over the front. He ended up tipping his own miss while he was still in the air, and it's a 10-point game. Now they're going to call the blocking foul on Towns, who's going for the steal on Kokenauer for the second straight possession. You know, Kareem Towns has not had a great ball game, but we've seen the flashes of brilliance, of raw talent that's going to make that young man a great player. Let's look at the layup. This, watch it as he loses the ball. He actually lost the ball and recovered in midair. Pretty athletic, and then he gets the foul very quickly on the other end, fouling Kokenauer. That's who's playing defense on Todd now, as Evansville has gone cold. 45-35, 13-46 left. That's the third foul on Paul Burke. On Paul Burke. Speedy, you know, Burke, Speedy uh, Morris uh, just told Paul that he's playing stupid defense. <laughs> Why? It really is. He's a little bit too far out on the floor to contend that aggressively. There's no reason for a foul right there. Here's Case Beer going to work. Excellent bounce pass to such a hoop on. That's exactly what you need to do. And uh, the rim just really didn't bounce back after Sasha hung on there for And that's the way I like it because you can get a little bit more uh, well, you of and a I good could shooter's roll when it's down. Yeah. At that level. <laughs> I'll tell you that Coach Cruz has to love to see that kind of pass from Case Beer. And Sasha went right up with it. He didn't uh, mess around. Didn't hesitate. Didn't bring the ball down. That's the most critical point for any young guys, big guys, trying to learn the game of basketball. Don't bring the ball down when you get the ball inside like that. Well, Wooten drew nothing but air that time as his shooting continues to go cold. This is a big possession for the Explorers. They would cut it to 10. It's back up to 12 now. They want to keep the momentum up, Gary. Turquin Mott. In trouble on the baseline. Paul Burke off the left hand dribble. A nice jumper. Squared nicely and put it in the bottom of the net. Little bit of a mismatch. He took Heisel inside for the jumper over the top. That's five for Paul Burke. That's five and it cuts the lead to ten as we've got 13 minutes even remaining in this one. Case Beer goes to the middle. Puts it up and scores. Out the bucket. And they're going to call the foul. On LaSalle. Well, it takes a lot of wind out of the Explorer's sails. Good little ball fake. Case Beer's famous. But he's made the move famous. Look at the ball fake. Goes inside. It gets hammered. Jeff Neubauer makes a nice play, setting up and taking the charge. But just before he could take that charge, Blitz Wooten hit Case Beer on the arm. And it's, again, that strength in the upper body that we talked about that he takes it to the hoop. A lot of guys can get that ball in that position and not finish up. Case Beer hits the free throw, gets the roll, and that's 12 for Parrish. He did not play the first 10 minutes of this game in Jim Cruz's doghouse. Just when Evansville needed an answer, they got it. 
They lead it again by 13. Here comes Kareem Towns, and here comes a shot. Loose ball picked up by Towns. He tries to go baseline. They're going to call the palming violation on Kareem Towns. Well, Evansville knows that LaSalle's trying to get the ball to Towns. They're doing a nice job of collapsing. There's a lot of help. Watch. There's two guys. Hoopman comes back, rotates back. Case Beer's helping out. Towns is not going to give up, though. Case Beer again, and then the foul. Here comes the technical. Turkland Mott picks up the personal. I think they're going to call and the technical. And then they call the technical on, on Turkland as well. Speedy Morris just told the officials that every move on 24, meaning Parrish Case Beer, is a foul. And so far in the second half, I haven't disagreed, and neither of the officials <laughs> no. because they've called it every time. Yep. So this will give Evansville the free throws and the basketball. Case Beer, who's already had a terrific night from the line, will uh, not get the free throw attempts because he wasn't in the act of shooting. So Scott Treffler, who led the MCC in free throw percentage last year, hits the first technical, and he'll shoot the second, and it will be Evansville basketball as they now take a 15-point lead at 52-37. 12-32 left. Mark, this is a 13-point game. This is potentially a four-point turnaround. A real critical call here. It is so big because they were right on the verge of getting it under double figures mm -hmm. for consecutive possessions. And instead, Evansville might make the spread sure. even larger. The momentum just switched. Kokenauer now slows up the pace just a little bit. It was going in LaSalle's favor as well. And he takes it out top to Schreffler. This is Mark Heisel. Evansville really with what you could argue as a four-guard offense. Heisel into the middle. The 5'10 senior brings it back out. Schreffler outside to Case Beer for the jumper. He's long. And Paul Burke has the rebound. Kareem Towns with the ball on the left side. Puts up the tray. No. And the rebound, Case Beer. Nice steal by Towns. And then he's fouled by Hoopman. That'll be four on the seven foot one center. And this is going to change Evansville's perspective. There's more than 11 minutes left in this ballgame. One of the ways LaSalle can get back in this ballgame is to get Sasha Hoopman out of the ballgame. He's coming up now. Andy Elkins, who's been a big surprise so far with 14 points, will be in when we come back. Evansville, 52. The LaSalle Explorers, 37. You're watching, Sal. Evansville is out-rebounded. The Explorers by six right now as Kokenauer makes a steal in the open court. Hits Schreffler who then just is off the case there. And there you have it. A bucket and another foul as Paris Case Beer hits it and will shoot another free throw. Look at Kokenauer. Gets it off. Great pass. Just case a great look from Schreffler. Case Beer just has a tremendous knack for the basketball. He's a scorer. He's always around the right places. This will make for point number 15 here, and he nails it. 15. He's only missed one free throw on the night. He can light it up. Here's a guy who scored 41 against Notre Dame last year, 44 against Illinois State. It doesn't seem to matter who's uh, playing against him either. Height, weight. He is strong enough to control it as Elkins makes the steal. And LaSalle makes a very important steal in the open court because they need to get a bucket here, and Kareem Towns thinks he's the man to get it. He'll pass out of the double team. Paul Burke with the three and the foul. Count the basket. Reed Jackson's a crowd favorite and a very aggressive defensive player, but that is not the kind of foul you want. You saw Jim Cruz not real happy with that. Let's check it out. He had released the ball, and as you see, he kind of came across his right arm a little bit. Not the uh, hardest of fouls against Reed Jackson, but nonetheless, his third. Well, we mentioned before the game, you got to defend the three-point shot. You have to, you can't, it's such an easy shot, you can't let him do it uncontested. Rarest of the rare, a four-point play for Paul Burke. But you cannot foul it on three-point range. Getting rather physical inside. And now LaSalle in a... A passive 1-3-1 one, one trapping zone. Case Beer out of the double team to Kokenauer. Schreffler baseline to Andy Elkins. Kokenauer will try the three. And he's got it. 
and Evansville handled that pressure, handled the pressure very well that time. Good patience, good execution. That's five for Kokenauer. Royella scored, or, I'm sorry, LaSalle has scored more points as Burke misses the three. LaSalle has scored more points than it did in all the first half now. At 20 in the first half, 21 in the second, and Evansville's leading it. 58-41 with 10 minutes and 30 seconds left as Andy Elkins misses, gets the tip and misses again. Loose ball picked up by Reed Jackson. He loses it. Elkins has it again. Top to Schreffler, and we're going to have a foul. You can't hustle more than LaSalle is right now, but it's just not going their way. No, you got to give them credit. Let's watch this whole transition here as Evansville's on the floor. LaSalle's on the floor. We went to a basketball game and a hockey game broke out. <laughs> we'll take a break. 10-21 remaining. Evansville leads it 58-41. Out with 10 points, but Speedy Morris is rebuilding with this LaSalle team this year. Yeah, and, and you know, we, we've talked a lot about Kareem Towns. Speedy Morris is used to having an NBA-type player. Back in 90, he had Lionel Simmons. Uh, 91, he had Doug, Doug Overton, of course, with the got drafted by Detroit. And 92, he had Randy Wood. So he doesn't have that big, big-name player. Hopefully, Kareem Towns will, will come along for him. But he's not used to, to being in a rebuilding situation, that's for sure. Well, Sal is one of the few colleges that, uh, since the NBA draft went to two rounds five years ago, uh, that Speedy Morris has had a representative in each of those drafts. One of his players has been taken. Andy Elkins at the line for Evansville. Hits the front, misses the front end of the one and one. But there for the rebound is Parrish Gaysbeer, and he actually gets a shot off without being fouled. And LaSalle brings it down the other way. They've gotten within 10 at 47-37 at the 13-10 mark, but now that we're at the 10-minute mark, they trail by 17 again. Evansville was taking some quick shots at that point. Yeah, and I think that's why during the, the TV timeout, Jim Cruz kind of settled his troops down a little bit. Green Towns liked that shot. He, he told uh, Kokenauer about it after he made it. <laughs> this is Schreffler, baseline to Case Bear who puts it up, and he got fouled as he goes to the basket. Not a rare occurrence here at Roberts Stadium tonight as Ray Schultz, the 6'9 senior from Pennsylvania, picks up the foul. Let's take a look at it again. Nobody's going to take Case Bear baseline. Uh, he just goes to the basket so strong with such conviction. He's either going to make a three-point play or else you're going to send him to the foul line. 14 for Parrish so far, and he puts number 15 up and in on the first of two free throws. You know, Mark, we talked about Speedy Morris. One of the things people don't really know about him, and he was hired at LaSalle as the women's basketball coach. You don't see a lot of guys coaching Division I basketball right now as Case Beer hits the second. It came from the women's program. You he don't was, even see that in high school. He, he was a very successful high school coach in Philadelphia area. That's why he recruits so much, as you mentioned, then went on to be the women's coach and went from the women's coach to the men's coach. I don't believe that's ever happened. Again, Towns with the long miss. As this team trails by 16 with nine and a half left, and Evansville is on the offensive again. This crowd really has not been a big factor in the game tonight. Sellout here at Roberts Stadium. 12,411. They're going to try and kill some clock with every possession now as they've got it under the 10-minute mark. Jackson in the lane, kicks it back out to Andy Elkins who will hit the three. Well, you've got to like Andy Elkins. Andy Elkins with 17. 12 in the first half, 5 in the second. And the guy that wasn't even supposed to start is probably our player of the game so far. LaSalle trails by 19 points. Their first MCC game ever. Paul Burke inside, throws it away, and Elkins makes the steal. Here come the Aces the other way. Schreffler can't handle Elkins' pass, and Blitz Wooten will take it the other way. Here comes Neubauer. Kareem Towns puts it up. You, no. knew, you knew that was going up. you got to love Towns, though. He knows that sooner or later he's going to get on one of those stretchers run. And you got to give Speedy Morris credit for letting him go. Let him learn. He realizes the potential he's going to be a great player someday. Towns reminds me of a guy that led the nation in scoring in Division I one year. Bo Lamar, in the middle 70s out of southwestern Louisiana, spent some time in the old ABA. And Towns has the exact same build and even some of the same looking shots. Yep. He gets the ball in the open court off the Pokenauer miss, puts it up no good, and he's fouled. 
And Andy Elkins, who seems to be in on every play for Evansville, picks up the personal. Let's take a look. Newbauer with the pass up court. Kareem Towns hesitates a little bit, gets settled. Lutike Colombo is back in now for the Explorers. Reed Jackson takes a rest for Evansville. As number four checks in for the first time tonight, an outstanding freshman out of Indianapolis Cathedral High School, Jermaine Ball. Towns three of four from the line so far. Shoot the first of two. He's got it. You know, it's tough for a lot of the older guys. Neubauer is, is a, really a freshman. I know he's a sophomore. He had a Prop 48 last year with, with Towns to watch him go through his learning process because he's taking a lot of shots. Some of them aren't that great. Sometimes it's difficult to watch if you're a, an upperclassman and you know you're in a rebuilding situation. Downs hits the second free throw as well as Schreffler goes uncontested into the lane and hits the jumper off the nice bounce pass from Kokenauer. Boy, when Schreffler gets his shoulders square to the basket, he's as smooth a shooter as there is in the league. He's proven that tonight. 13 for Scott. Jumper no good, and there comes the aces the other way. Elkins, bounce pass, Jermaine. Ball with the left hand, no good. It's blocked by Towns, and here comes Kareem the other way. Double triples. I'll tell you what, even when he makes a mistake, he's a, just a joy to watch. He's saying, they let me do that at South Philly. Kareem Towns is going to be a guy I think we'll hear from we'll in hear the NBA. Him. Yep. 14 turnovers so far for LaSalle. Evansville, a very unlike ace total of 17. It's not affected them on the scoreboard where they lead by 19. 65-46, 7-27 left in the game. Shaka Chandler back in for Evansville. This is Kokenauer. We haven't sat out much tonight. He's on the floor a lot. Well, I said before, he started 57 games in a row for... The Evansville Aces, the next closest guy, has only started four in a row, so <laughs> that's saying quite a bit. Elkins walked before he got off the wild shot, and that's the 18th turnover now for the Aces. Back in. That just means Blitz Woot. That just means Kokenauer has managed to stay out of Coach Cruz's doghouse a little bit longer than the rest of the guys. No question how hard he plays the game, and so does this guy, too. Number four, freshman Jermaine Ball. Blitz Wooten finally got the kind of shot he wanted off a great feed from Neubauer, and an excellent steal by Paul Burke, and he saves it to Neubauer. Here comes Kareem Town with a jam. Oh. The throwdown, the toss, the flush. <laughs> Showed a little athletic ability right there. Took off from the... We've got a 15-point game, 65-50 Evansville. Maybe that's what Kareem needed to get his game going again. Now he'll try one of those 23-footers and drain it. This is Andy Elkins. Jermaine Ball. Evansville trying to kill some clock. LaSalle wanted to walk on Case Beer. This is Shaka Chandler. Yeah, I think you'll see uh, the Aces go for six or seven passes. Run a little time off the clock. Do just that as Kokenauer brings it back toward the 10, and we're going to have a foul on Paul Burke. As he kind of presses on Shaka Chandler, his fourth foul. That's just Speedy Morris said, take a look at the shot clock. I was just going to say, it's just not a smart foul. They played great defense. 10 seconds left on a on the shot clock, and here's, look at this. He's just not moving his feet. He's holding on to him. And you might have heard Speedy Morris. He's Speedy's doing uh, not only a great coaching job tonight, but also color for us. Yeah, here I'm going to give him my headphones. Of the week. Four fouls on Paul Burke. The Shaka Chandler misses the first of the one on one. One of the rare ace misses so far here tonight. And here come the Explorers down 15 points with six minutes even remaining in this game. Newbauer baseline. He's trapped, and the five second call goes the other way. That's the second five-second call tonight. Those are the kind of kind of calls that just grind you as a coach. It's, you just give up a possession for no reason at all. You're just not thinking. Newbauer trying to create something, but you can't do that very well when you're trapped by the baseline and the sideline. Well, nothing ever got accomplished by dribbling the basketball. You got to pass and make something happen. Evansville knocks uh, the loose ball out of bounds, and they knock uh, Neubauer out of bounds as well. 
He's got blood on his knee. This guy's not giving up. 6'4", senior out of Slidell, Louisiana. How'd he make his way to Philly? Parrish Casebeer with a turnaround jumper over Blitz Wooten. And Parrish has it going. That's 16 in the game for the 6'3", junior. 67 to 50, Evansville. Five minutes and 15 seconds remain. Blitz Wooten inside, turn around, no. The nice left-handed tip by Lutike Colombo. You've been waiting to say that name all night, haven't you? Hey, you know, I, the reason I like saying it so much is because I just learned how to say it before the game. <laughs> and because I can. Lutike Colombo has five. I'll probably butcher it before the night's out. Evansville still taking some time off the clock. Towns, nice steal from Kokenauer. Good pass ahead to Paul Burke, who gets the lay-in. And it's 67-54. 440 left. Evansville wants a timeout. Jim Cruz lost the tie earlier. He's ready to shed the jacket as his team now has seen its lead diminish to 13 with 438 remaining. We'll be back with more. Little Sal Explorers in their very first MCC game tonight. 12,411 on hand watching tonight's game in Robert Stadium in Evansville, and they like what they've seen so far with 4.36 left. Their aces lead at 67-54. Jermaine Ball with the ball. As you see, the shooting percentage is so far heavily in Evansville's favor, 56% to 33%. And LaSalle gets a blocking foul now on Jermaine Ball of Evansville. So they'll go down and shoot the one and one as they're in the bonus. And this is exactly what they need. Shooting free throws with the clock stop. That's right. No better time to, to make some hay than when that, when that clock's not running. Well, Sal's done an excellent job. They've only missed one so far. And Evansville, 16 of 19 from the free throw strike. As Neubauer will take his first shot. And Jeff misses. And the rebound goes to Reed Jackson of Evansville. Missed opportunity for LaSalle. They needed those badly. This is Scott Schreffler for Evansville. Chaka Chandler. Four guards and a forward. Reed Jackson at 6'7", the biggest player in the lineup for Evansville right now. He takes it inside and dishes off to Case Beer. Parrish with the shot, but brings it back out as he doesn't take it. This is Jermaine Ball. Chaka Chandler with a jumper. Now it's baseline for number five. And that's seven, the first bucket of the second half for Shaka Chandler. The Aces ran about a minute off the clock. Sorry, about 45 seconds off the clock. Just what they wanted to do. Baseline for LaSalle comes Lutike Colombo, who misses. Jeff Neubauer with a rebound. Kareem Towns goes up with a shot, but Scott Schreffler takes it away, and here come the Aces the other way. Ball, nice crossover dribble. Shoots the jumper is short, and LaSalle gets the rebound. 3.23 left. Blitz Wooten inside with the jumper. Blitz Wooten finally nails it. It's a 69-56 game. Down 13. LaSalle's going to put on a little bit more pressure in the backcourt. Kareem Town, fast freshman out of Philadelphia. Freshman in eligible, actually a, his first year, but a sophomore in eligibility. Case Beer misses inside. Ball's kicked out of bounds, and they're going to give it to Evansville. Kokenauer comes back in after one of his rare resting periods, and they really are a different team when he's not in there. Yeah, he's a key guy to have, and he's really the floor leader. A lot of coaches talk about having a coach out on the floor, a quarterback, a little a point guard, and boy, that fits Todd Kokenauer to a key. Watch Case be a real nice baseline move. Just didn't get a chance to get it to go down. Jackson with a nice follow-up, but got it slapped out of bounds. Ray Schultz back into the game for LaSalle and now in for Evansville is Sasha Hoopman who left the game with four fouls but the big seven foot one center is back in now. He got his fourth foul at 11.50 remaining in this game and there are now two minutes and 51 seconds left on the scoreboard clock at Robert Stadium. Kokenauer wants his aces to take some time off the clock and Case Beer is shock of the night fouled inside. <laughs> Boy's been in the line a lot. He drew the foul on Ray Schultz, the 6'9 senior, and we'll take a look. He just takes it to the hoop so well. Well, one of the things that the reason, you know, obviously his physique, he, he doesn't look like a big-time basketball player, but he moves so well. And this is one of the things that, ironically, the coaches at Evansville were trying to get him to do more of. 
moving without the ball there. You saw he moved through the lane, got open, got to the hoop. 20 points for Parrish Casebeer, and we've talked about it all night long. He didn't play the first 10 minutes of this game. 21 for 24 now. He's had a big night at the free throw line. The Sal trails it by 15, and you got to wonder if they're going to start shooting from behind the stripe now. And the man who would want to do that is Kareem Towns, but Blitz Wooten is finally warming up. He knocked those. He's hit his last three. <laughs> Reed Jackson breaks the press against Jeff Neubauer. Neubauer picks up the foul. I think he hit his funny bone. Not a bad foul to give up at this point, though, before they could take off some time on the clock. Kind of riding his hip there a little bit. Got a little shot to the chest. Neubauer's holding his lung. Creed Jackson misses a free throw, and that's been a rarity for Evansville tonight. 6'5 sophomore out of Norris City, Illinois. Averaging only 6.3 points a game. Normally an 84% free throw shooter. Hits the second. His first point of the game. Well below his average, but he's done the board, job on the boards tonight for the Aces. Neubauer to Wooten. Here comes Kareem Towns, and he's fouled. Let's see if they give him the three, three free throws for shooting the three. He's very close to the line, but I think he was behind it enough, and indeed they do. Kareem Towns will shoot three free throws as Scott Schreffler Kind of got in his face a little bit too much. Yeah, they might need an ice bucket in the locker room to ice down that elbow. Hey, I love players like that. I do too. I, the great thing is, Kareem, is, I mean, early on in the game, we started talking about shooters, and, and you pointed out that they don't stop shooting even when they're missing. And that's been the case with Kareem tonight, who has now hit the 20 mark. He's done a good job from the free throw line. Speedy Morris uh, urging on his explorers now to pick up Evansville. Over the entire court as Andy Elkins comes back in for Sasha Hoopman. He'll get a nice round of applause. Welcome back. Aces are going to go now with more of a ball control offense, so they don't need the height of Hoopman in, in front court. You know, we mentioned this being a rebuilding year for the LaSalle Explorers. It's a great program. They've been in postseason play the last six seasons. Four of them in the NCAA tournament, so... This is no slouch program. They're having a little down year, and, and they're going to come back and be strong. A real nice addition to the MCC. Towns is going to try and go for his third free throw in a row, and that makes him eight of nine from the free throw line, and 22 points now for the sophomore. A little bit of pressure, but nobody picks up Reed Jackson, so he'll bring it across the timeline for Evansville. They've got five good ball handlers in the game right now. Yeah, and LaSalle doesn't have the horses to play pressure defense that you would need to get back in the ball game at this point. Two minutes even remaining as Evansville leads it 72 to 61. Jackson loses the ball, but Elkins is there to pick it up. Into the trap now on a, a light touch foul from Schultz. Ray Schultz picks up his foul. That's four on Ray, and now for defensive purposes, Jim Cruz is moving his troops back and forth, and the big seven-footer Hoopman is back in. So Jackson will shoot the one-and-one. One. He'll get two now that we're inside the two-minute mark. Two shots for Reed Jackson of Evansville. His team leads it by 11 with a minute 49 left. And he puts them up by... 12 with his second point of the night. You think if you just saw a shot of Jim Cruz, do you think he's happy with his performance tonight? I don't think he's happy with some of the shots they've taken. Uh, you couldn't tell by that shot. Uh, he's got to be a little happier than his last couple of games, though. Especially but, with the big W. He's happy with the 13-point lead and the uh, minute 39 left on the clock right now. We'll see how they finish out. And he's unhappy with that foul from Todd Kokenauer, I'm sure. is 23 foul, 23. Kokenauer got the body. On Paul Burke. 6-1 sophomore took it to the hoop here. I, got a, I have a feeling that practice for the Purple Aces this week was not a, not a whole lot of fun after getting drilled by Southern Illinois. They had just 42 points offensively, shot 28% from the field. But they got to be happy to come back. Play. They played good defense tonight. So much is made out of Jim Cruz being a Bob Knight disciple, but when you watch his team, it's obvious that uh, 
he's given it a flavor of his own. Uh, many things, uh, the very tough man-to-man -to -man defense, uh, for one, probably comes from his playing under Bob Knight at Indiana, but he has his own stamp on his team. Well, I can remember, like I mentioned, we played four times in this building at Xavier, and uh, every time you come in here, you better tie your shoes on tight because these guys really get after you. They play tough defense. They set hard picks. They're all hard-nosed, and, and that's the way they play basketball. Nice job by Jackson to bring it back out as Evansville is uh, really playing more against the clock right now. Here's Case Beer. We'll see if he can pick up a foul out here, huh? Coconauer. Shreffler's the guy they'd like to see, Evansville would like to see at the line. Evansville up 12 with a minute 12 left. Towns doesn't get a foul. Case Beer takes it to the hoop, misses the layup, and Elkins is there for the tip. 76-62 with a minute remaining. Andy Elkins with a big night tonight has 19. You gotta like the job he did. I'll tell you, I, I think if we were voting for an MVP, I'd, I'd pick Andy Elkins. He really picked the squad up. Got Evansville off to a good start. Jermaine Ball back into the game for Evansville. So too is Sasha Hoopman replacing Todd Kokenauer and Andy Elkins. We've got 54 seconds left. 76-62. NBA style three goes Reed. down for Lutike Colombo. I think we ought to give him his number for that one. Five. That was long range. 49 seconds remaining. Evansville leads it 76-65. With each new day. You find a way to be your best. Gillette Sensor for the closest, safest shave ever. You know you got to be a little better than the rest. Only 65, Mark Patrick along with Gary Massa. And Gary, we were just discussing in the timeout. LaSalle with a really good second half. Yeah, you have to give him credit. We mentioned, yes, it's a rebuilding year, but... I'll tell you what, your first MCC game, you don't want to come out and, and lay down and be flat, and they certainly didn't do that in the second half. They came out, not a whole lot of quit in this team, and they got within 11. 49 seconds left. Elkins takes the inbounds and heads down court. He traveled. But before he did, they're going to call a foul. <laughs> His pivot foot slipped a little bit. That's what I get for officiating at this point. Let him know, Robin, let him know. I'm Certainly glad I'm sitting on this side of the desk. They called the foul on Jeff Neubauer, and he's fouled out of the game with three points. And here comes Mike Melchioni, the 6'6 freshman out of Indian Mills, New Jersey. And Mike Melchioni's kind of an interesting story. Yes, he is a relative of all the famous Melchionis, as he pointed out to us before the game. They're his cousins. That's right. Three of them at Villanova, one down at Duke, one defector, I guess. Andy Elkins will shoot the free throws. Great basketball family. And he misses the first. 46 seconds remain. Evansville leads it by 11. I'm going to make a wild prediction here and say that Kareem Towns is going to come down and shoot a three. <laughs> really going out on a limb, aren't you? Paul Burke is going to get a five-second violation if he doesn't pick it up, but he does just in time. Takes a baseline, and he's fouled. Jim Cruz is beside himself at his team stopping the clock at this point in the game. Watch Scott Schreffler play the defense here. Not a real smart foul, but I'll tell you, every basketball, has it, every basketball player has it ingrained in his mind to play defense and never let your man go baseline. And he was just trying to stop that, and I know he fouled, but... 42 seconds left. Hoopman is winded just from going in and out of the game on the uh, strategic substitutions from Jim Cruz offensively and defensively. Well, we've got a moment. We want to thank Evansville University Director of Athletics, James Byers, head coach Jim Cruz, his staff, and sports information director, Bob Boxell. We'd also like to thank the Director of Athletics at LaSalle University, Robert Mullen. Head coach William Speedy Morris, his staff, and Sports Information Director, Michael Felici. The steal from LaSalle as they trail by 10 with 39 seconds left, and they're going to be shooting more free throws. Evansville's going to get a little bit of practice this week on killing the clock and taking care of the basketball. Kokenauer back in now for Jermaine Ball. 
the small lineup is in for Evansville, but it's cost them so far is Lutike Colombo. He's at the line for the Explorers, but he misses the free throw. LaSalle is on an 8-2 run. It's the first they, time they've had it under 10 points since 47-37. And if they'd, have had, if they'd have made some of their free throws, it could be a ball game right now. Treffler uh, draws the foul in a dangerous move, dribbling the ball just under the LaSalle bucket. 35 seconds remain. <laughs> this last two minutes has taken the last half hour. Boy, he is, well, Towns picks up his third foul. And, uh, Kareem not happy. He hadn't gotten a shot off in the last couple of minutes. Colombo just missed those free throws and came over to Coach Speedy Morrison. Speedy just shook his head. How that, could you miss those free throws? Ten point Evansville lead as Scott Schreffler misses the free throw. Just when I was getting ready to say you've got the MCC's best free throw shooter from a year ago at the line, he misses. The lead stays at 10, and Schreffler would like very much to make it 11. And Hoopman's coming in and out of this game. He might get in shape just doing that. He's going to run track, if nothing else. He's got to get his win back. Sasha had it. only his fourth game back. Paul Burke puts up the three for LaSalle. No, the tip by Melchione. No, here comes a shot by Kareem Towns. He eats it as Hoopman puts it back in his face. And we've got another jump ball. And the possession arrow is pointing toward LaSalle. We reset it. 78, 67, 22 seconds remaining in this game. Burke again. No good. Rebound tipped out. Paul Burke. Kareem Towns with the three nails it. As you predicted. Oh, a big foul, and now they're going to call the intentional foul on Paul Burke. And that hurts LaSalle. 78 70 with 12 seconds remaining. And that just about puts it in the books. The fifth foul on Paul Burke, who played a gutsy game for LaSalle here tonight. And as we mentioned, leads with a lot of floor burns. Jermaine Ball comes back into the game for Evansville. Bergen comes in, Mike Bergen, a 6'4 senior for LaSalle in College Park, Maryland. Seeing his first action of the year. And Case Beer will shoot the intentional free throws. The first is good. 22 points for Parrish Case Beer. Paul Burke fouls out with 10 tonight. And of course, Evansville will get the ball back. Evansville will get the ball back as Case Beer goes for number 23, and he's got it. 23 for 24, and his team leads it again by 10. Much closer second half than first half. The Aces led by 17 at the end of the break. Jermaine Ball will dribble out the remaining seconds now. Treffler with five. Ball, Case Beer puts two more in the scoring total. 25 points for Paris Case Beer. And that's the game. Evansville, 82. LaSalle, 70. The Explorers' first game ever in the MCC. And their first loss. And Evansville goes to the top of the conference. With the win, they are at 1-0, and a surprise loss today by your Xavier Musketeers, Gary. The Muskies disappointed me, but that's really good for the league. The, the conference shows a little bit of parity. It showed, looked early on like Xavier was going to take off with this whole thing. Not so. Detroit with a big win up there, 97-90 in overtime. And a great ball game here tonight. Top scores for the game for tonight for Evansville. Harris Casebeer had 25 points for the Aces to lead the way. Elkins had 20. Scott Schreffler had 14 in an outstanding floor game. And for the LaSalle Explorers, 25 points tonight for Kareem Towns, who is a Prop 48 sophomore, but a tremendous game. John LeCrone, the commissioner now of the MCC, joins us. And uh, the new entry just didn't disappoint in the second half. Uh, they really hung in there tough with Evansville. LaSalle played very well tonight, I thought. Of course, Evansville noted for their defense. I, I thought they played defensively very well the first half, maybe not as well as the second half, but I think LaSalle did very well for themselves tonight. John, I would say that uh, this is the kind of atmosphere that you would hope for at all of your uh, MCC conference sites. I was, I was on radio at halftime, and I was so impressed with the building. It's really one of the nicest buildings I've been in of this size 
uh, at least in this part of the country, and it's really nice to have this kind of crowd, this kind of enthusiasm. I thought it was a real nice night for the MCC. Again, the final 82-70. Evansville comes away with their first win of this MCC season. We'll come back with more in just a moment. Actually, that's it for us here from Evansville tonight. Robert Stadium, thanks to everyone.